Hello students, I welcome you all in the new branch of uh, law, LLM. I really welcome you all. Topic for today's lecture is uh, comparative law. So we'll basically deal with the importance and introduction. What is the introduction of comparative law? Uh, what is the concept of comparative law? So I'll start with comparative law is the study of differences and similarities between the law that is a legal system of different different countries right then it involves the study of different legal systems in the existence in the world which also includes the common law civil law socialistic law and so called canon law jewish law islamic law hindu law and chinese law right then it includes a description and an analysis of foreign legal system even when there is no explicit explicit comparison is undertaken. Now you will say, ma'am, what is the importance uh, of comparative law? Why we should study this comparative law? So the importance of comparative law has increased enormously uh, in the present age of national internationalism for uh, economic globalization and democratization. Next slide, we'll deal with the history that uh, what is the history of comparative law. Uh, comparative law through studies the similarities between both the legal system, whereas the family laws, right, like law uh, is the basic level of classification. The main difference between law families uh, are found in the sources of law, the role of courts precedents, the origin and development of the legal system. So then there was Mont Montesquieu, uh, he is generally regarded as an early uh, founding figure of comparative law. He basically has founded the comparative law. His comparative approach is obviously uh, except from chapter 3 of book 1 of his masterpiece. The book named was De Aspiritus Laws, uh, first translated by the Thomas Nugent in 1750. The political and civil laws of each nation should be adopted in such a manner to the people for whom they are framed that it should be a great chance if, if uh, those of one nation suits another. They should be in a relation to the nature and principle of each government whether they form as they may be said as the political laws or whether they are supportive in the case of, in the case of civil institutions. Now, in the third slide, we'll deal with the purpose of comparative law. That for uh, what is the actual purpose of comparative law? First one is to attain a deeper knowledge of the system in this effect. That is, we should have a person should have proper deeper knowledge in the field of law. He should be expertise in all the field of law. Second one is the to uh, perfect the legal system in effect, possibly to contribute a unification of legal system of a smaller or a larger scale. Example, for instance. Unidroid initiative that is uh, when a person whenever a person has a proper legal knowledge we get trained in a specialized field so we uh, as a citizen of India can play a very good role in the society for uh, the for public interest for the beneficial of society. Now in the last slide we will deal with the uh, relationship with other legal subjects that what is the relationship of comparative law with all other legal subjects. Now first one is comparative law is different from general jurisprudence. Jurisprudence is the knowledge of law right. So it is also said as legal theory. Comparative law is different from general jurisprudence and from public and private international law. Uh, however, it helps inform all of these uh, areas of no, uh, normativity. For example, comparative law can help uh, international legal institutions such as those of United Nations systems. And for what it may help? It may help in analyzing the laws of different countries which are reg uh, regarding their treaties obligations that is the regarding the obligations of their treaty, the duties they have towards the treaty. Comparative law would also be applicable to private international law when developing an approach to interpretation in a conflict analysis. Right. Then comparative law may contribute to legal theories. Uh, it also contributes to legal theories how? By uh, creating categories and concepts of general applications. Then what happened? Uh, comparative law also provides insights into the question of legal transplant. For instance, transplanting of law and legal institutions from one system to another. 
then the notion of legal transplants was coined by alan watson which who was a one of the renowned scholars uh, specializing in the comparative law who was very famous in the fields of comparative law who has a uh, experience knowledge in the this field